Hey YouTube, Mr. Terry back here once again for another History Teacher Reacts video. Thanks for joining me today in my never-ending quest of historical knowledge. Today we are going to be watching a, another video um, from Salmonella. Um, this is the second one I've watched uh, from that channel, and I thought it was pretty good, so I thought I would see what else uh, the channel's got to offer. So um, this video came up um, in some of the top videos from the channel. And thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, the title of this episode is Terare, the Hungriest Man in History. So, I don't know, that could that could mean a lot of things and could be lots of different settings. So, I have no idea what to, what to expect here, but um, I hope for good things. <laughs> Alright, before we begin though, I want to make sure to plug the original video here if you like it. Um, I'll leave a description down below so you can give them a like and subscribe. If you like what we're doing here on this channel, be sure to subscribe as well. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Again, Terrari, the hungriest man in history. Let's see what they got for us here. Hey kids, I think we can all agree that there are few pastimes more grotesque than competitive eating. The concept of a bunch of guys pushing their anatomy <laughs> yeah, to its probably. limits just for sport leaves a bad taste in my mouth in more ways than one. But imagine if these men didn't adopt this habit just for fun. Imagine if some gross biological error forced them to eat like this for their entire life. Introducing Tarare. Tarare wait, 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 wait. So, okay, so they're setting up somebody that had to eat a lot, I guess. I like how they gave him like a big old mouth for that. That's just kind of what they assume somebody that would need to eat a lot would would happen here. Okay. Ferrari was born in France around 1772 to a poor farming family. It's said that his appetite was so voracious around 1770. Right, 1772. Um, Thinking that era here um, before the American Revolution, of course, or um, yeah, before the American Revolution, about three years or so. Uh, before that gets started, um, France, French Revolution, and some of the, well, I should say the, the uh, thinking about the context of France here, um, we got uh, um, kind of on the eve, actually, because of, of, of the revolution. I mean, still going to be a, um, a couple decades away, um, nearly, but uh, the long-term effects, especially, actually, this is bringing it into my mind now, because one of the the uh, things that happened on the eve of the revolution has kind of helped fuel it. The French Revolution was um, a lack of food, right? Specifically, um, ingredients to grow bread, which is a staple food product of France, uh, and has been for a long time. So um, now I know the famines begin uh, at least in the eighties, seventeen eighties. I don't know if they went back all the way to the seventies. Someone could probably add a little bit more to that of when the actual famine started. So I wonder if this guy with the eating is like the eating habit or whatever or whatever he's gonna have here. Um, if that went into play with uh, the food deprivation that uh, is I know is gonna happen in the next decade, but yeah. Seventy-two to a poor farming family. It mm, said that farmers. his appetite was so voracious that, by his teens, Terrari could eat an entire quarter of a cow carcass in a single day. You'd think he'd be like mega obese, but no. He only hey, what? Said that his appetite was so voracious that, by his teens, Terrari could eat an entire quarter of a cow carcass in a single day. You'd think he'd be like mega obese, but no. He only weighed a hundred pounds by age seventeen. However, there were still a few things that. St Holy metabolism! If you could actually have that sort of thing here, um, quarter of a cow. You have any idea how much meat that actually is? Wow. Obese, okay. but no, he only weighed a hundred pounds by age seventeen. What a metabolism. However, there were still a few things that stood out about Terrare appearance-wise. For one, he had a huge, stretched-out mouth with horribly <laughs> stained teeth. He could reportedly fit 12 eggs in his cheeks at once, much like a chipmunk keeping its chipmunk eggs warm. Additionally, okay. when Terrari was full, he'd get a crazy Octomom gut going, <laughs> and any other time, he'd have a huge flap of stretched out skin hanging around. Octomom was that, uh, if you heard about that woman who, um, got pregnant and gave birth to eight babies. Yeah, imagine the size of the stomach for that, so. Yeah, if you were only 100 pounds and you ate that much, your your gut or whatever, that thing would fluctuate like crazy. Alright, this guy sounds pretty interesting now. 
crazy Octomom gut going, and any other time, he'd have a huge flap of stretched out skin <laughs> yeah. hanging around his waist. He also stank to high hell, even by 18th century French peasant standards. What he was described as reeking, habit, quote, though. to such a degree that he could not be endured within the distance of 20 paces. So between <laughs> all this and his horrendous outhouse flooding dumps, his family had had enough. Alright, you're eating us out of house and home here. You gotta go, man. <laughs> You heard me. Kick bricks, froggy. <laughs> wow, he just called a French person a frog. That's so racist. No, it's not. They're all French. The guy just looks like a frog is all. Oh. Well, too late. I'm already offended. That's fair. Dislike. After leaving home, Terare was forced to beg and steal just to satisfy his gargantuan appetite. Inevitably, people began to take notice of him, and eventually he landed a job as a street performer in Paris. People would hand Terare entire baskets of apples, eggs, and even wine corks, and watch in delight as he horked them down without the slightest hesitation. Normally, this went off without a hitch, except for one time when he suffered a severe intestinal blockage. Not Fortunately, bad. the crowd was kind enough to carry him to the hospital, where he was treated with the strongest laxatives the 18th century had to offer. I would draw what happened next, but it would probably get my channel deleted. So let's just picture it for a few <laughs> moments. <sighs> Moving on. Cut to the year 1792. This marks the beginning of the War of the First Coalition. Ever heard of it? Me neither. Who is in it? Fucking everyone. Anyway, Terare decided to enlist in the war. After all, maybe that profound emptiness he okay. was feeling was just a lack of purpose in life. Turns out, no, he really was just psychotically hungry. Even after being granted quadruple rations, Terari would still be digging through the trash pile whenever he got the chance. After suffering extreme exhaustion, he was sent off to the military hospital in Soutzorin. The staff there was so dumbfounded by the man's abilities that they decided to keep him there to run a few experiments. The first of which involved putting Terare in a room with a meal prepared for 15 people. Naturally, he ate the entire thing and immediately fell asleep. Next, they presented... So you wonder if it's just, um... Like, we have a... We have mechanisms in our body that basically tell us, okay, we're satisfied. Like, our body's satisfied, right? Like, we can't eat anymore. I, I wonder, and it seems like with this, that's just, he has that inability to to actually do that. That his body does not say no, you know what I mean? Because he could still only hold so much food, but that response by his body um, may not exist. But that would be really interesting for science, you know what I mean, to... to see why that might be prepared for 15 people. Naturally, he ate the entire thing and immediately fell asleep. Next, they presented him with a raw eel. In response, oh. Terari crushed the eel's skull between his teeth before slurping down the entire creature in one go. Now, this is hair-clenchingly horrifying for a couple of reasons. Firstly, he put a whole frickin' eel in his yeah. stomach. But yeah. secondly, there had to be some point during digestion where the meat was gone but the bones still remained. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, an eel skeleton looks like this. That means Terari had that? all of those needle-sized ribs stabbing into the walls of his stomach at once, and he was fine. He also ripped a live cat apart with of the his way bare out. hands, drank its blood, and ate everything but its bones, and then later gagged up the fur and skin like an owl, but... You know, that's neither here nor there. After reviewing our data, I've come to the scientific conclusion that, uh, yeah, we got a goddamn demon on our hands. But as we all know, with great devour comes great responsibility. Since Terare was still technically enlisted, the military decided to utilize his abilities for the greater good. How? Hey, Terare, it's me, the general. Listen, could you eat this box with a note in it for me? Mm. If you do it, we'll give you a wheelbarrow you know. full of bull organs. <laughs> <laughs> Lo and behold, two days later, he passed the container in mint condition and was given his reward whoa, as Whoa, 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 whoa. How can your body pass a box? I mean, unless it's like micro... Oh, my gosh. Oh, wait, he's showing up with the, with the organs or whatever. What, I, I, you know, use them to, like, smuggle in stuff now? Like, like secret messages or... Yeah, so transporting some kind of secret objects. Is that where this is going? Lo and behold, two days later, he passed the container in mint condition and was given his reward <laughs> as promised. Condition. With this proof of concept, they made him an official spy and sent him into Prussia yeah. with a document in his belly to be delivered to an imprisoned French colonel. Unfortunately, there are a couple things Terare couldn't do that are generally important when sneaking into another country. A, he couldn't speak German, and B, it's pretty hard to maintain a low profile when you're running around like a madman, <laughs> wolfing down garbage and mutilating small animals. So he ended up being captured by the enemy. Initially, 
he kept his well, mouth of a spy. for once. But after a whipping and a day in jail, Terari gave in. After confessing that he did, in fact, have vital intelligence snaking its way through his GI track, the Prussians chained him to a latrine <laughs> until the box emerged 30 hours later. The note wasn't actually anything important, so they just mock executed him, gave him a severe beating, and sent him on his way. After all that, Wait, Terari mock execution? They uh, mock executed him? And they didn't. It wasn't even like important information. Was the ger, was the general just messing with them? What was the point? Important. So they just mock executed him, gave him a severe beating, and sent him on his way. After all that, Terari returned to life at the hospital, desperate for a cure for his condition. But nothing they ever tried worked. Meanwhile, the man's endless hunger continued to get him into all sorts of trouble. He'd often sneak out of the hospital to eat the scraps behind the local butcher and fight stray dogs in the alley for their precious garbage. He so he could eat like raw stuff too. That didn't mess with him. He could just. Di he could just. I mean, some super crazy digestive system, I guess. Like, it just it passes or anything. But he, he must not be getting much nutrition from it, though, because it, it passes unscathed and he doesn't gain weight, so... Interesting. He'd also seek out patients undergoing bloodletting in order to take all their life juice for himself. On several occasions, he was even caught attempting to eat bodies in the mortuary. By this point in my research, I was so desensitized to this guy that I didn't even bat an eye when I first read that. I was just like, alright. Guess he must have been hungry. Anyway, the hospital staff begrudgingly tolerated Terare's buffoonery, until one day when he went too far. Well, Terare, you've oh. only had three mess hall raids, four miscellaneous trash-related mishaps, and one cadaver defiling. So I'd say, so far, this week's been pretty good. <laughs> Uh, doctor, what we should do? probably inform you that a 14-month-old child has gone missing from their room. No. Terare, look at me. Did you eat a fucking baby? <laughs> Terare was promptly kicked out of the hospital so and spent four years out and about doing, you know, whatever horrific shit you can imagine. When he came back, he was suffering from advanced tuberculosis and died shortly after arrival. During his autopsy, the surgeons found that when they looked into his mouth, they could see all the way down his throat and into his stomach cavity. As you can imagine, his whole abdominal region was profoundly deformed. Basically, if yeah. this is a normal human, this is what they found inside Terare. Just like the man's mind, we can see that around 90% is devoted towards food and 10% towards everything else. So, moral of the yeah. story here is that, no, you know what, not even I can find anything Maybe resembling a moral here. Not all stories have a point to them. Yeah. Sometimes they're just sad and disgusting from beginning to end. And now a word from our sponsor. As you can probably tell, I'm a very visual person when it comes to learning. I, always I let firmly them believe that engaging so, visuals you know, it's, it's are an essential to teaching tool that allows creator. for much deeper comprehension than plain old walls of text. That's why I'm pleased to introduce our sponsor, Brilliant.org. We all know that math and science are really important to master, and Brilliant's elegant UI and step-by-step -step design makes learning seemingly complex topics very intuitive, especially mm. for visual learners. Their straightforward graphics, delightful animations, and interactive Dwarf, puzzles make it easy it's easy and fun to hone your own critical thinking skills. Useful. Personally, I've always been super intrigued by neural networks and all the things you can do with them, but I've always been too intimidated to research them in depth. After learning about Brilliant, I actually started taking their course in the subject, and I gotta say, it's been such a pleasurable experience that I plan to continue with it in my own spare time. To support me and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash salmonella and sign up for free. Also, the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. Cool. Yeah, interesting story. Not a lot of, like, historical context is there to talk about. More just the fascinating story of this complicated person that had a... I mean, they said at the end, a deformity there that would... That, would, uh, that caused him that, right? It's like esophagus is huge and he's all just food processing fruit uh food processing organs obviously that's going to affect other things with the health but i thought that you know the most interesting possible historical context thing was like trying to use him as a maybe as a spy and you could like hide stuff but apparently they didn't really take that very seriously plus he made a lousy spy he was too obvious in his behaviors <laughs> obviously too erratic there so well just an interesting little story that you probably would have never heard of anywhere else, right? So pass that on. Do do with it what you will. <laughs> All right. Uh, a few plugs on the way out here. If you liked the original video, make sure that you um, go to 
um, the link that I'll have in the description to the original video. Give them a like, a subscribe, and that sort of thing. Um, if you like what we did here on this channel, make sure that you um, um, sub. Um, if you'd like to join us for the video premieres, good might be a good idea to enable the notifications so you can see when those um, when those start. A few ways you can support the channel: one's through Patreon. There'll be a link down below too. One of the benefits you get from uh, from Patreon um, currently right now for donators of all monetary levels um, get to participate in my weekly poll. Uh, for videos um, to be featured on this channel. So if you're liking more influence with that, uh, what what gets on the channel, that'd be a great way. You can also make donations through Streamlabs, through Super, super Chat functions. Uh, lots of ways you can do that. But of course, um, donations never required, never expected, only appreciated. All right. Well, with that, uh, I think that'll um, bring us to the end for today. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Bye.